What do you think was happening before the Big Bang? Sort of two ways that I like to think about that question. One is it could be that uh, the Big Bang was an interesting event, but not the first event in the totality of reality. It could have been the first event that sparked the expansion of our part of space. But it could be that there's a grander realm of space within which we sit as a small part, and that grander realm may have been here for a far longer period of time. It may have experienced its own Big Bangs, maybe a collection of Big Bangs that may extend infinitely far into the past. So it could be that the answer to the question of what happened before the Big Bang is a lot of other Big Bangs or a lot of other quantum events that were taking place in a larger landscape of reality than we have direct access to. However, another answer is that the very question may not make as much sense as the words seem to suggest. We know how to parse that sentence. We know what it means to talk about the moment before the Big Bang because we know how to talk about the moment before your birth or the moment before the Civil War or the moment before any event that happened in the world. We fully understand the meaning of that kind of sentence. But it could be that when it comes to the Big Bang, the sentence actually doesn't mean anything. It could be that the Big Bang was the place where time itself started. And uh, Hawking himself had a wonderful analogy to get this across. He said, look, imagine you're walking on planet Earth and you pass by some and you say, hey, can you point me in the direction of north? I want to walk in the northward direction. They point you, continue to walk. You pass by somebody else, say, hey, which way is further north? And they point you in that direction. But when you get to the North Pole and talk to somebody there and say, hey, how do I go further north? They look at you and say, whoa, that question doesn't mean anything because this is where north begins. There's no notion of going further north than the North Pole. And it could be that that spatial metaphor applies to time. Talk about a billion years ago or 10 billion years ago, but if you go to 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang, that may be where time started. And you can't go further back in time than the very origin of time itself. What caused the Big Bang? Yeah. Like why would something smaller than the head of a pin yeah. become everything that we see in the cosmos? Yeah. The idea that I think most physicists or cosmologists buy into at the moment is that gravity can have two manifestations. The usual form of gravity that you and I know about is the attractive version. You drop something toward the Earth and it moves downward because the Earth and the object pull on each other. That's the ordinary gravity that we experience every day of our lives. But... Einstein's equations actually allow gravity to also be repulsive. It can push outward as opposed to just pulling inward. And this is something that we have never experienced because the gravity created by a rocky object like the Earth is always the attractive variety. The gravity created by the sun, again, a compact object is always the attractive variety. But Einstein's math shows that if you don't have a a rocky object that's isolated in space, but rather energy that is uniformly spread through a region of space, that that kind of entity yields repulsive gravity. Why is that important to your question? If the very early universe, if it was filled with a uniform bath of this energy, we call it the inflaton field, the name doesn't matter, but if it was filled with that energy, it would have been subject to repulsive gravity. What does repulsive gravity do? Pushes everything apart, causes everything to rush outward. So the bang of the Big Bang may have been a spark of repulsive gravity operating with a tiny region of space that pushed everything apart. Since the 1920s, everybody thought that, yes, the universe is expanding, but it will slow down over time. Why? Because gravity pulls things back together. You throw an apple upward, it doesn't go up faster and faster. It goes up slower and slower because the Earth's gravity pulls it back. Everybody thought that would apply to the universe as a whole. It's expanding, but expanding ever slower. The observations in 1998, culminated in 1998, which won the 2011 Nobel Prize, showed that the distant galaxies are moving away ever more quickly. The expansion of space is speeding up over time. It's accelerating. How do we explain that? The best explanation we currently have is repulsive gravity. We believe even today, the universe is suffused with a bath of energy. We call it dark energy. We believe it's uniformly going through space. One of the theories suggests that in the very early universe, it was a highly chaotic environment, very hot with all the fields fluctuating wildly up and down. 
And the idea would be that if you wait long enough, where it's hard to know what wait means in this environment, but don't press me on my definition of time back then, just sort of intuitively. If you wait long enough, on rare occasions, the energy will just happen to flatten out in a region, become uniform, and then that region explosively inflates, grows large. It can go from a size that's much less than an atomic diameter to larger than the observable universe in far less than a blink of an eye, in 10 to the minus 30, 10 to the minus 35 seconds. That's how powerful repulsive gravity can be.